Okay, welcome back. Going to be discussing some miscellaneous topics today. Um, got my shades on because it's nighttime. I'm trying to block out the blue light. You know how we do. Okay. Uh, all right. So in an earlier episode, I discussed the the sheer cliffs of England, and I just wanted to offer a, a couple corrections here. Um, as you can see here, it's uh, quite a bit of the cliff has, has come down, you know, just due to gravity and weathering and whatever. Uh, you know, these little debris piles. Um, and I think I had said in the previous, previous video that you don't see that very much, but you do see it quite a bit. Um, and uh, also wanted to acknowledge um, this, this phenomena, the phenomenon of the, the sheer cliff. Um, as seen here in Oregon, which I pointed out in that same video, uh, it's it can happen naturally. Um, I mean, I already knew that when I was discussing it, but I just wanted to reiterate that it's, this is a, a crack that opened up in uh, New Zealand as a result of an earthquake. So you can have these these sheer faces um, naturally. So it's you know not necessarily a big conspiracy in that particular case. Um, and, you know, it's not out of the question that uh, due to continental drift, uh, this could have um, just remained relatively intact for its, its whole transit um, apart from the European continent, because I think that's how the the conventional explanation for the England cliffs is that they uh, just kind of separated and, and drifted away from the rest of the continent. So it could be, yeah. Just wanted to acknowledge that real quick. And another correction, I believe, in uh, video number five, I said something like, this video sucks and I'm boring, but that video sucked. I mean, <laughs> didn't suck. The video did not suck, and I'm not boring. So, just wanted to clear that up. Um, okay. This dude, uh, John Levi. So let me do a couple shout-outs real quick. So, uh, four channels are, are pretty good that I wanted to, to mention. Uh, Wise Up. I've watched about half of his videos. Um, John Levi, who I'll talk more about in a second. Uh, Life Creations is a good one. And then Conspiracy R Us. Um, I've watched those last three channels. I've watched all their videos. So um, it's hard to keep up, but uh, there's a lot of information to digest. So uh, I'll link to those in the description. Okay, so this dude, John Levi. Oh, crap. Um, let me go back to this video because he, he f sees the same thing. Um, the, the fake coastlines. Um, I don't have audio on it, but he's pointing out the, the streak marks in uh, Alaska in his video and uh, a number of other features and just how pointy it is. Um, so uh, he, he found that out before I found it out. So uh, props to that guy. Um, uh, okay, so there's that. And I'll link to this to this video in the description. Okay, and then um, in one of his videos, John Levi uh, gives us this uh, cool little Easter egg in uh, uh, Google Earth. Um, where are we? We're like somewhere above Russia. You can see this, this line here. It's probably a glitch, but it could also be like um, actual data or an actual map that we're seeing here. Uh, so, I mean, there's speculation that there could be uh, hidden continents up here or whatever, so you can take a look up this line. But the thing I wanted to point out was uh, if you keep going all the way to the, I guess, what the north, where the north, north pole is, um, <laughs> you see these little waveforms. I'm not sure what that is. It's probably nothing, 
So my first best guess is that these are, uh, it's just a glitch, it's just gibberish, you know, just data sets clashing together and making, or, you know, stitching issues, um, digital artifact. So that's my first best guess. My second best guess is that uh, <laughs> someone's trying to send, send us on a, a wild goose chase, just like as a prank or, or to, as a distraction or whatever. Um, could be. And then third and least likely it would be that it's some kind of uh, meaningful data set or code. And there's actual interesting information here. But I kind of, I don't know, I kind of doubt it. Um, and you, I, I won't show you the whole thing, but it just doesn't look like a traditional, it kind of looks like audio in some places and like a uh, weird electrical signal or something. Okay. Anyways, I just thought that was interesting. Some, some people may, may find that interesting. All right. Uh, just moving on to miscellaneous topics today. All right. I wanted to talk about, um, hodgepodge theory. <laughs> And that's the idea that um, <clears throat> a lot, of, a lot of what we see in uh, in nature and also in in history is like deliberately designed to not make sense. <laughs> so you see multiple uh, confusing uh, narratives that don't add up. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let, um, the best way I've heard it described is in this, this interview here, uh, go full screen, Roswell alien interview, uh, I'll link to it in the description. It's probably a fake document, but it's nonetheless, it, uh, um, it illustrates the concept pretty well. So, uh, I'll just read it to you, um, and uh, in the description, I'll have the, the timestamp and the, the window. It's about six minutes of audio, and I'm sure you can find the PDF of, of this as well. Okay, so false meanings prevent knowledge of the truth. The pyramid cultures of Earth are fabricated illusion. They are nothing more than false civilizations contrived by the old empire mystery cult called the Brothers of the Serpent. Serpent. False meanings were invented to create the illusion of a false society to further reinforce the amnesia mechanism among the inmate inmates in the Earth prison system. I think that means inmates. Um, uh, mystery is built of lies and half-truths. Lies cause persistence because they alter facts which are comprised of exact dates, places, and events. When truth is known, a lie no longer persists. If the exact truth is revealed, it is no longer a mystery. All of the pyramid civilizations of Earth were carefully contrived of layer upon layer of lies, skillfully combined with a few truths. The priest cult of the old empire combined sophisticated mathematics and space opera technology with theatrical metaphors and symbolism. All of these are complete fabrications of truth, baited with the allure of aesthetics and mystery. So basically a deliberate um, uh, misguide or misdirect or uh, an, an eddy, uh, something to, to draw, draw you in and uh, discombobulate you. Um, and this is an alleged alien uh, relaying this information to someone who's interviewing them. So check that out if you want. Um, all right, I'll continue. The, the intricate rituals, ast astronomical alignments, secret rites, massive monuments, marvelous architecture, artistically rendered hieroglyphs, and man-animal gods were designed to create an unsolvable mystery for the Isby prison population on Earth. And Isby here is, um, I think it stands for immortal spiritual being. It just means like a soul, like the you that's not physical, whatever. Um, so again, designed to create create an unsolvable mystery. So <laughs> it's it's not meant to add up. We're not we can't connect the dots because they can't be connected because the point of the dots is uh, 
to not connect so that we can we're bandied about in this uh, uh, confusion or whatever. Um, okay. The mystery diverts attention away from the truth that Isbees have been captured, given amnesia, and imprisoned on a planet far, far away from their home. The truth is that every single Isby on Earth came to Earth from some other planetary system. Not one person on Earth is a native inhabitant. Human beings did not evolve on Earth. In the past, Egyptian society was run by the prison administrators or priests who in turn manipulated a pharaoh, controlled the treasury, and kept the intimate population, the inmate population, enslaved physically and spiritually. In modern times, the priests have changed, but the function is the same. However, now the priests, now the priests are prisoners too. Mystery reinforces the walls of the prison. The old empire feared that the Isbees on Earth might regain their memory. Therefore, one of the primary functions of the old empire priesthood is to prevent Isbees on Earth from remembering who they really are, how they came to Earth, where they came from. The old empire operators of the prison system and their superiors do not want Isbees to remember who murdered them, captured them, stole all of their possessions, sent them to Earth, gave them amnesia, and condemned them to in eternal imprisonment. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. Uh, foreboding music. This includes... Nope. Out of order here. Imagine what might happen if all of the inmates in the prison suddenly remembered that they have the right to be free. What if they suddenly realize that they have been falsely imprisoned and rise up as one against the guards? They are afraid to re reveal anything that looks like the civilization of the inmates' home planets. A body, a piece of clothing, a symbol, a spaceship, an advanced electronics device, or any other remnant of a civilization from a home planet could remind a being and rekindle his memory. Sophisticated technologies of entrapment and enslavement which were developed over millions of years in the old empire, have been applied to the Isbees on Earth with the intention to create a false facade for the prison. These facades were installed on Earth in totality, all at once. Every piece is a fully integrated part of the prison system. So I'm toying with the idea here that, um, that Tartaria, Egypt, uh, everything is... Uh, are just layers of this <laughs> of this facade thing, um, possibly. It's it's a big maybe. It's a big maybe. I'm just it's a compelling idea, and I thought I would uh, commu communicate it, recommunicate it. These facades were installed on Earth in totality all at once. Every piece is a fully integrated part of the prison system. This includes a religion of mumbo jumbo double speak. Every pyramid civilization uses this as part of a control mechanism to keep the population enslaved by force, by fear, and by ignorance. The indecipherable muddle of irrelevant information, geometric designs, mathematical calculation, astronomical alignments are part of a false spirituality based on solid objects rather than immortal spirits in order to confuse and disorient the Isbees on Earth. When the body of a person died, they were buried with their earthly possessions, including their former body wrapped in linen to sustain their soul or ka after death. An isbi does not have a soul. An isbi is a soul. On the home planet of an isbi, their material possessions were not lost, stolen, or forgotten when the being died or left the body. An isbi could return and claim the possessions. However, if the isbi has amnesia, they will not remember that they ha had any possession. So governments, insurance companies, bankers, family members, and other vultures can pick their possessions clean without fear of retribution from the deceased. The only reason for these false meanings is to instill the idea that an isbi is not a spirit, but a physical object. This is a lie. It is a trap for an isbi. Countless people have spent Endless hours attempting to solve the jigsaw puzzle of Egypt and other old empire civilizations. They are puzzles made of pieces that do not fit. A question st states its own answer. 
What is the mystery of Egypt and other pyramid cultures? Mystery. Okay, I'll read you that last bit again, because that's, that's the key point here. Um, they are puzzles made of pieces that do not fit. A question that states its own answer. What is the mystery of Egypt and other pyramid cultures? Mystery. So, that's as much as I wanted to read. And then I have my own commentary on it, a couple of different ways of phrasing things that I just thought I would read here. Um, okay, so it's possible that we're not dealing with any ancient civilizations, but rather the megalithic remains are a subset of the same machining project or terraforming project, which machine the coasts and mountains. Take, for example, the two distinct building styles at Baalbek, megalithic and newer, but not as impressive on top. And then also there's a, a spot where um, there's uh, old, uh, newer repairs on top and then the, the old megalithic, like huge blocks, and then more newer repairs underneath. So uh, that's pretty confusing and, and hard to explain. Um, uh, and then the same thing in Peru, uh, you have repairs alongside, or a newer style alongside an older style. Uh, repairs and rebuilds done to old megalithic sites that were in disrepair. Well, what if the repairs and the older site were actually done at the same time, deliberately, to add to the mystery and give room for multiple erroneous interpretations? Sorry if it's a little monot monotone monotone here i'm just reading off the page um but i put some thought into this so uh, i just thought i'd read it right out <clears throat> is it possible that whoever terraformed the landscape also erected the megalithic sites did they maybe deliberately create both the megalithic and the less impressive modern revisions at the same time deliberately using two different construction styles to create the illusion of some kind of mysterious history they maybe create the Nazca lines and inexplicable squirrely features as a deliberate effort to confuse with a false nonsensical history. Um, okay, so uh, I'll get back to this part in a second. Uh, mishmashing, mishmashing of features, like a feature, feature hodgepodge. Um, you build some structures to be genuinely megalithic, then you build other structures that look very similar, but are constructed of brick with plaster over, over them to make it look megalithic. Then add some uh, repairs in a second style. Then bury some of them intentionally. Maybe create a fine precision architectural masterpiece. Then add some phantom tool marks in various styles. And some melted looking parts. And some chisel marks and some weird artwork depicting irrelevant or false events, then destroy it. Um, here's another way of looking at it. Uh, if you had high-tech capability of printing a universe down to the subatomic level, and you mastered the science of deception and confusion and discombobulation, you could print out an Earth environment like ours, complete with a rich civilizational and natural history. It was done with human psychology in mind. So, so they would know that when we, we, when we see a linear feature that we, would, we could interpret it as, a, or like a right angle or something, that we might interpret it as either natural or uh, man-made uh, and each one in various different ways. So it might, uh, it might deliberately make these weird, uh, weird features that could go either way. Like, is that, did we do that? Or did nature do that? Or, you know what I mean? Um, okay, so uh, here's another, another piece of this. Imagine an AI interpol interpolating between a quarry and ancient ruins. So what I mean by that is, let's check out this video. This is, I'll link to this in the description as well. Um, this is a great channel, Two Minute Papers. He discusses a lot, a lot of, uh, AI and deep learning stuff. Um, okay, so these uh, these are different. Uh, each uh, horizontal thing here is a, a different um, image set. So it starts with image A and image B, and then it interpolates continuously in between. 
without just doing like a clumsy average or like a fade between them, but um, it interpolates between the features. Like here you have a, a close-up of a dog and then the, the second image is of a, a bird, <clears throat> um, you know, sitting on a rock or whatever. And then in the middle here you have what are actual meaningful um, in, uh, interpolations between them or uh, kind of in between uh, kind of pseudo average like here's a you know you can start with very disparate images as your two images as your um, initial initial um, thingamajig um, and then interpolate between them see this is like a crab in, in the ocean and then like a dog in the forest and then in between you can see uh, there's um, very interesting images that could almost be either, you know what I mean? Um, so here's a, a bird and a, a fly. You know, we got like a bird fly here. And uh, what is this? Two, two, two different dogs. And they're in different poses too, so it's, it's pretty impressive. Um, so where I'm going with this is, imagine if, uh, you know, the architect or whatever, the, the you know, whoever, did all the shenanigans. Um, imagine if they, uh, if part of their process was interpolating between, uh, you know, uh, uh, a ro rocky mountain and uh, a megalithic site. So on one one side we have like, um, you know, uh, Mount Everest over here. Then over here we have like Stonehenge. And then in between you might have something that kind of looks natural and kind of looks man-made. Do you know what I mean? And that's why we kind of, that, that might be why we kind of see um, strange features that it's like, is that, did we, did someone create that or, or is that natural? And it, it's impossible to tell because it's, it's like neither and both. Um, Maybe I mean it's very 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 speculative, and it's just it's a, it's it's a big maybe. It's just what if it could just print out a a, a surface complete with um, features that already look like uh, they were um, uh, they had this this history to them uh, or this patterning that has. Uh, a deliberately confusing um, theme to it or aesthetic. Um, or imagine like trying to interpolate between ancient Greek and Grecian architecture over here and, uh, and like Tartarian over here or um, you know like what you see in Holland or uh, Russia or whatever and then you'd have all kinds of interesting buildings in between. Okay, so I think I made my point on that. Um, and then, yeah, these uh, this is, these are the stone circles in Africa, and this is continuing on that same point. You've got lots of different weird-looking stuff, and uh, as per that uh, alien interview, alleged alien interview I read to you, um, these geometrical formations, possibly including crop circles too, are, are just part of the same, like, gibberish protocol so uh, I mean some people think it's like cymatics or whatever um, there's all kinds of different stuff but uh, have you seen uh, like the weird images spit out by Google deep dream so it, uh, that's kind of in the vein of, of what I'm talking about here like just like it, 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 this looks like it could be natural or but then uh, you've got um, you know the walls are like stacked rocks, so that was that looks like it was done by hand, and then uh, and then I just noticed that this on Brian Forrester's channel, um, he's uh, pointing out. Hopefully he doesn't mind me using his video. Uh, uh, the landscape here, these these lines and ridges here, it's like um, it's like stacked rock. I couldn't figure it out what it, what it was at first on, on Google Earth. Um, but yeah, you see it's like lines of rock. And what I'm saying is maybe it, it was never 
used for any man-made purposes, nor was it formed naturally. <laughs> it, it was just like brought into being like this, or uh, it's tough to explain. I'll show you it from above in a second. Um, uh, this is like drone footage and just like these walls and they go for miles and miles and miles and miles. Um, something, I think that's it. And then you see what it looks, and it's, I'm saying it's kind of similar. That's, this is near Lake Titicaca in Peru, I think. And it's similar to the, the stone circles in Africa in that it doesn't, it doesn't make much sense. <laughs> um, okay, so here's it from above. Um, so here's Lake Titicaca in Peru over here. And uh, you can really just zoom in on any area over here. It's a whole big area. And you can see these weird... Uh, Um, and it looks different in different places too. Um, you could say it's mining, but it's like just linear piles of stacked rocks, like in a pseudo ordered, pseudo random way. It's like kind of ordered, kind of not. See, like this, this is, uh, and I couldn't tell at first what, whether these are like, whether like indentations or, or protrusions or what's going on there. But I think this is the, the lines of stacked rocks he was pointing out. And I uh, had a better example a second ago. Oh, well. And you see it up on the mountain ridges and all around. So you can see it here a little bit. Wherever I was on the first, uh, that first image. That's, that was a good example. Anyways, if, if you s just scroll around this area, I'm sure you'll see it. But where, where you do see it, you see it covering like a, a huge, huge area. It's on the other side of the lake too. Can't find it though. All right, anyways. Um, Couple more things here. Um, oh, one more point on that. Uh, this island here off the northwest coast of Africa, it's got kind of a similar, like gibberish geometric pattern. Like, what was this? Was this like ancient farming? Was this recent, like strip mining or something? Or, and let's see, is this like other people here? This doesn't look like a whole lot going on on this island, you know, in, in terms of modern stuff. I mean, now that I look at this stuff, it could be like coral deposits. So let's go back and look at that. But there, there are other places where you see like rectangles next to them and stuff like that. It almost looks, looks like a big like fingerprint or something. But it could just be part of the, the gibberish algorithm. You know, a random kind of ridge there. Um, let me try and find one. Uh, it's like a Russian island over here. Had some pretty weird... Uh, oh, I'm in Japan. I don't even know where I am. Okay, what are these strange grooves and divots? Um, so, yeah, so like this, this weird stuff. Um, so, uh, this may not be what I, what I was saying before, like tool marks, tool marks, but uh, just like <laughs> deliberate confusion, like to lead you off the track, and there really is no track. <laughs> Um, more strange lines and features. I mean, is a tractor just driving in a zigzag pattern? It could be. Um, the circles here, uh, weird, very weird patterns. You know, because you can look at this and you could say, oh, this is the footprint of a, a former city. Or you could say, 
um, any number of things. You could you could try and come up with a natural explanation, and you might that even looks kind of looks like a stick figure, um, and you might you might be able to come up with a good natural explanation, or uh, or you could say it's like a buried some or other like an old road or or it's intentionally nonsensical um, it might be yeah this is right here I think it's like random squiggles lines tidbits This looks like an old river system or something. And then, yeah, I mean, this could be a lost civilization or something, or, or you know, somebody had it through a party in the 1850s and left a big mess on an island or something. I don't know. <clears throat> you never know. Could be anything. Again, still a maybe for me on all of this stuff. Just toying with the ideas. Okay, and then... Um, I made a, a Reddit post I wanted to bring to your attention in case you prefer to scroll and look at like more of a blog format. Um, uh, so this the title is "Why do coastlines look like they were art artificially machined?" And I had to post in the the junior section because they don't let you post in like the regular section for like two months after you join Reddit or whatever. So um, so this only has like twenty views or something. Uh, but anyways, just check that out, chunk, 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 and you, I'll link this in the description as well. Um, this is uh, Korea Island, wherever that is, somewhere in the Pacific, I think. And uh, I mean, it could be natural, but or it could be just modern, um, you know, ex excavation or, or just uh, gathering sand for industrial projects or whatever. Um, but it looks like something just took bites out of the coast in angles like that. Um, and on, on a neighboring island, you see a very same thing. This looks like a fake little bay here. And of course, water, um, water smooths. Uh, I mean, it's going back and forth and back and forth for thousands of years so, or millions or whatever. Um, so it's going to smooth out um, whatever surface it touches. I'm just, I'm just saying. Even so, it's it, it's there's a potential uh, alternative explanation, which is that something just took bites somehow out of the coast. Um, here's another little angular or uh, little divot thing. Uh, this island in. Canada somewhere, and you can see it looks like a clean sweep with a little strip of land remaining at the end. And this is like a thin, thin bay. It's like a thin strip of land, which you see pretty often, and then, and then it's also the, the clean sweep look. Um, here's another similar thing, clean sweep with the little, little bits of land at the end. Not quite sure how that would work. It's worth noting that there's a river right here, so that could have something to do with it. And then, of course, um, Google Maps is going to color uh, features um, uh, somewhat uh, to, to highlight certain things and uh, give it more contrast and whatever. So just because something looks a certain way on Google Maps doesn't mean it's necessarily um, super close to what it looks like. In reality, you know, like this, this might be glare here, or, or you know, this might be six inches deep or six feet deep. It's, it's tough to say. Um, but these these little chunks, I think I already pointed these out. This this guy I already pointed out. Um, and then Yonaguni, there's this angular line here, which could be modern. Uh, a little bit of land remaining between two. Uh, Possible sweeps with the pointy middle, and then a little nub here in, uh, in between two sweeps, possibly. 
And that's about it for that. And then while I have, in the last few minutes, I'll just take you th through some uh, features in Google Earth. All right, where are we at? Okay, this, this was pointed out in uh, John, John Levi's video. Again, his, his channel is in the description. I recommend his videos. Um, uh, so th these, uh, he's, he was saying it looks like some mountains were, were squeezed out um, as if through uh, like toothpaste from a tooth toothpaste tube. And you can kind of see it here. And it's, it's tough to say what form. These are like protruding uh, stone ridges. Uh, it's just the rock. It's kind of straight, kind of jagged. Again, it could be completely natural. Um, but it almost looks like, like a layer cake uh, or like a, like, f like a frosting tube. <laughs> I just squeezed out this whole, um, mountain ridge and these, these linear streaks, they could be, I mean, a, a result of a pass through with some kind of smoothing, uh, or, or tool or something like that, or it could have been like that when it was laid down or it could be exposed geological layers, uh, which would be not conspiracy theory related at all. Um, so I just thought that was interesting. Uh, streaks, it's, it's very similar to the streaks we see uh, along the coast. So that's why I mention it um, along bays and stuff. So it's, it's like something just cut through here. Um, long ridges, got it. Oh, audio forms already showed you that. Multiple mini protrusions, so yeah. Yeah, this set of islands here in the, where is this? You know, right in the middle of the Pacific somewhere. Um, there's lots of Lots of uh, blatant machining, which could be some modern industrial project. I don't know, you know. Uh, so, you know, we've got a little bit of land remaining in between little tool sweeps or, you know, whatever happened. Um, and then, but then when you see something like this, like these dark streaks, that looks like it could be just natural sand flow or, or whatever. So it's, again, you gotta, you gotta be critical. Uh, but there's this weird phenomenon that you see on all these islands. It's like uh, a pretty straight line, like a very straight line, ending in like this uh, little heart shape or like a boomerang shape. And it could be, it could be some kind of fishing device, like a, a lobster trap or something like that. I don't know, uh, but hopefully you can make that out and see what I'm talking about. I don't know what to, to make of that. It's pretty weird. Um, I'll show you a couple more examples. Okay, and then this, this okay, this is probably just coconut farming or something similar, palm, palm, uh, palm oil farming, or palm trees or whatever. Um, but it just, it just caught my eye. Just, I just thought I'd mention how regularly spaced the, the trees are. In some places it's random, and then in other places it's like in a perfectly regular uh, layout, and there's some better examples in other places. Like, uh, kind of see it there. I'm wondering if this, this is, uh, these are like part of a, a farming operation. You know, just coconuts or whatever. Uh, and you see it on on all these islands here. Uh, the same thing, just regularly spaced trees. Which I just wonder, you know, ninety percent odds it's some rain uh, or some modern thing. Just that I'm not uh, aware of, but just a small part of me says maybe it's, you know, there, there were recently planted trees from, uh, I don't know, planted by uh, by drone or, or, you know, by robot or something, uh, or I don't know, not necessarily by robot, but this is that area that was on the, the Reddit post, very angular, you can see. Um, okay. Oh, and another thing, 
John Levi mentioned in his video, which I'm glad he did, is uh, airports. And of course, if you're on an island, you're going to need an airport uh, to get there, even a small little one that you don't use very much. Um, but it's just after looking at so many airports, I just wondered uh, whether it wasn't like a, an old feature first and then they repurposed it as an airport in more modern times in our current era. Uh, I still think that might be the case. I'm 50-50 on that one, so I don't know. Um, I thought I was going crazy because I was like, I can't be. Um, anyways. Uh, regularly spaced trees are modern farming. This is my island there. You can see the difference between like kind of the random, more random area and, and then just like little patches of like regularly spaced trees. Which is a little, a little odd and you see like, you know, you see it here, 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 and Who knows? Could just be farming. Anyways, little heart at the end of the line. Okay, got that one, I think. Yeah, showed that one, and then there's more examples of that. There's another one down the same shore. Um, it's very faint. Uh, I don't know if we could see it. See right there. And that could even be a, a natural feature, like some kind of coral or something. Or. And it's tough to say whether it's indented or, or protruding, like raised up. Um, some more of it here. Another little one there. And are we seeing lines with, associated with those ones? want to get to the bottom of it. Not necessarily in every case. Uh, heart shape over here. Okay. And this was in that Reddit post, this area. Again, it could all be natural. I don't know. Or it could just be modern uh, industrial projects. You know, they came in here and they needed some whatever was here, the sand or the rocks, and they chunked it out. Could be. Same set of islands here. This, is, see, it just, it tickles my spidey senses, because, or my, my BS meter, because uh, it just looks like such a whack, like, artificial, like, the, the straight sides and then the, the current, uh, curve there it's just and again that could be what water naturally does to a to a, a shore it's bumping against I don't know and I think that's just a road yeah uh, artificial bay same spot same same deal there and as you can see it's not it's not perfectly straight so you might be tripping Let's get a better look at that. Is that like rock? And yeah, again, some of these lines, they look perfectly natural. So it makes me rethink the, the goofier ones. Or it could be, you know, some are, some are from natural uh, run over, just sand sloshing back and forth. and and some of it's machined or see two, two uh, sweeps there with some lamb in the middle, maybe. And I think this, I think this will all be common knowledge in about two to three years that uh, if it's even true, <laughs> at the, the surface of the earth is a uh, Phony, or a uh, a manufactured thingy. Okay, yeah. See, these these look pretty natural to me. I'm not I'm not 
I'm not saying I'm not saying everything looks artificial. Okay, we got like a double coast here. Um, so it's like one one uh, streak of, of what is it, rock or sand, and then another one here, both both linear, fairly smooth curve there, and then another couple linear features. Um, could be like a tool jump, you know, like when a like when it skips across the surface. Something like that. And then, see, you can see here, like, kind of a faint, like, fake bay type shape. Same kind of deal here. I still go back and forth. Like, I'm, I'm just... <laughs> Am I seeing things? Am I, am I uh, jumping to conclusions here? Uh, or so, sometimes I just it's just like so obvious that I, I don't doubt it at all. So yeah, I go back and forth still. All right, I'll, I'll take you through the rest of these or as many as I can get through. Uh, thin jetty protrusion, same type of deal. You got one, a standalone one right there. Couple different directions. This nice little circle that looks natural. Uh, and again, I encourage you to, to scroll around yourself, do your own, do your own uh, snooping around, and then this. See this? Like this just looks discontinuous. Like there's there's the the island. And it's in its pattern, and then just this like piece of toast <laughs> like taken out of it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Maybe clouds kind of obscuring it. I don't know, man. So I'm kind of like a trapezoidal deal about it. And then there's people right there, so I could have something to do with it. This is pretty. Pretty straight line, but it could be because the water is uh, going perpendicular to the surface in some places and not so perpendicular in other places, just the way the, the shore is facing. So you might ex expect to see these straight lines just straight up due to uh, the, the water activity or something. Okay. Uh, line and blob. So you've got uh, hard to see because of the clouds, but mm, yeah, just make of it what you will. Figure this one out already. Short. Uh, okay, pointing out these jagged, angular. Uh, sweeps here with lines in between. And you don't see a line right here, so uh, I don't know why you see it in some places and, and do see it in other places. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Sweep, sweep. Let's look at it more 2D. Sweep along. We got a point here. In a lot of places you see a, a gap here where it looks like the something you know crossed over on its way over here or something like that so you see, you'll see a gap like right on the uh, the pointy part <clears throat> okay more regularly spaced trees what island is this this is I, don't, I think these are all called technically uh, coral atolls So maybe all the uh, the chompiness, the machines look is just due to uh, I don't know governments trying to maintain the atoll or whatever, or I don't know, because it, it's pretty uh, a lot of activity going on, 
or a lot of erosion. Uh, um, what did I want to say? Uh, okay, these trees here. That's what I wanted to say. Forget. Bummer. All right, well. Again, regularly spaced trees could just be cocoa. I'm, I mean, I, I feel stupid saying it because I haven't even Googled it, so I shouldn't talk about it too much. And you see them growing in lines here. Uh, yeah, that just looks like a... Like it's buzzed, buzzed out of there. Linear streaks, okay. Linear uh, patterns of trees. Jagged angular coast. Got kind of a straight part here and then angular, kind of angular. No kind of straight. Okay, here's another heart, Dealy Bobber. Fishing trap? Maybe. May have already showed you this one. Let's see. I, I mean, there's they, there's a lot of them, and they look very similar. You got this chromosome looking thing. Probably natural, I don't know. <clears throat> and this could be uh, uh, just a man made, modern, modern, natural. I mean, modern. Uh, Easily explainable um, little shrimp farm or something. I don't know. Random line jetty. See if that's a, a modern jetty. Like, what purpose does it serve? Like, there's. I, mean, I don't see any huts around here or, or houses. Doesn't mean nobody goes here, but. Uh, yeah, like, if that's a jetty, like. I doubt it. <clears throat> Material at end of tool sweep, maybe. Clean sweep and line at the end. So, is this natural? Is it, you know, a pile of rocks? Is it uh, a particular way a particular type of coral grows and burrows in a, a line like that? I don't know. <clears throat> Actually, I hadn't thought about that, that some of these linear uh, features could just be like some kind of biological, like coral or something. <clears throat> or, you know, just streaks from storms or whatever. All right. Yeah, I should do that already. Very angular mini bays. Kind of speaks for itself. Okay. Okay, here's the old uh, polygonal pattern, kind of similar to what we saw earlier with uh, in Peru. Uh, like the just random stone walls that don't really seem to serve much of a purpose. It doesn't look like farms. It might be, but I don't think so. And I think you see it elsewhere on this island as well. More old pattern. Let's get you a good look at it. And what we really need with this stuff is uh, um, HD drone footage or you know, something that can go up really high, like at about this height, like where I am right now, you know, a couple hundred, maybe a couple thousand feet, and then, uh, and then, you know, give you multiple views of it so you can really zero in on what it is you're looking at and the, the details of it. Uh, this could be, I don't know. It's 
go to the other end of the island just for the hell of it. See if we see the same thing. It's, looks like it's underwater. Kinda. Yeah, I guess. I mean, that could even be natural, just like the way the land like cracks. You know, dry it gets dry and then it gets wet and then it gets dry and then hot and cold. And, I, mean, that's, you, I mean, you walk outside and you'll see that on the concrete. You'll see similar, similar patterns. So, gotta keep that in mind. But if it's like a stone wall and it's like hand uh, stones, like hand laid on top of one another, like you see in the stone circles in Africa, then you know it, it can't be that. Um, and then here's more of the regularly patterned trees. Say one more time, that's probably farming, but maybe something weirder. Okay. Uh, where did, where, where, okay. Okay, more regularly spaced trees, same island. Uh, looks like palm trees. And I mean, palm oil is a pretty huge industry, so we should expect to see a lot of palm trees and shit. See, this is what I mean by like an old airport. Like it kind of looks like it was something before. Could be wrong. Like there's that feature there, this here, this, this kind of faint rectangle here. Uh, it's just kind of like a, a WTF collectively. And it, it does actually make sense that we see many small airports just because uh, planes need an, uh, an emergency place to land, uh, like a safety cushion. And, uh, and it's similar to this, this spot we saw on the island in, in Russia. And also, if you want to get to an island like that, you're either going to go by boat or you're going to fly. So, I mean, you got to have, if you're going to get there, you need a little airstrip. So that makes sense. But uh, the spot in Russia, right here, like you've got this thin airstrip. And then um, you can see in the 360 photo, you've got barrels of what are probably fuel. Hey, go back. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, obviously. It's an interesting building there. What else is going on there? But you've got con uh, construction all along here. Uh, you can see these cranes or whatever that is. Um, and the electrical box here. So just general supplies probably for planes. Airplanes in general don't make sense because it's a uh, kind of a silly technology if you ask me. But, um, okay, so this crane right here, um, that's actually where we see some of those squiggly lines. So now I kind of feel stupid. <laughs> uh, I don't know why they would make this pattern, but maybe they're just making the pattern. And it's just modern construction. I mean, we saw a crane, so modern construction, unless they're like covering it up you know, destroying the evidence, but I, I don't know. I figure it's just something, to, something I'm not quite able to understand. Some kind of modern construction project since we saw the multiple cranes. Pretty goofy features though, like what the, I don't know. 50-50. <clears throat> okay, let's go to... Okay, this one's pretty out there, but just saying it, it uh, not saying it is, but or I believe it is, but it looks like a, a claw or a tooth. Well, let's just measure it real quick. <laughs> See how big it would be. Uh, it's a yes centimeters, please. <clears throat> a four four mile claw. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I doubt it. I'm just saying it's just kind of a, a fun, fun thing to, I don't know, maybe I'm wasting my time, but I think it's kind of fun. Um, so do I think that's a, a cross-sectioned claw? Probably not, but 
maybe maybe somebody used a, a grow ray like a high-tech grow ray on um like the opposite of honey i shrunk the kids and they just pointed it at a claw and puffed it, puffed it in the middle of the ocean. I doubt it, but I, what I was saying is it looks like the same spot in South America, Lake Pupo or Popu or something, right here. If it loads, come on, man. It's very similar to uh, to these. It looks like a. See that. That looks like a shark tooth or a claw. Like, and if you go in three, more three D, you can kind of see it. Uh, it just it looks like it was severed flat. Like it's the underbelly of it. Like it's upside down, and it cur curves underneath, and then it comes back up right there. And again, this is like twelve miles wide, so I don't know. Thought I'd point that out. Pretty cool looking, and this whole uh, this whole lake has dried up now. In case you were wondering, so you could that's just dry land now. So, anyways, abrupt end to hill. Okay, so around this island, Niue in. Uh, the ocean. <laughs> um, you've got this lip around the edge of it. All around the edge. Again, could be perfectly natural, probably is. Could also be just like CNC machine. Or some of these spots you can see, like it, it almost looks like. Uh, turn around here. Like it, like took little mini, mini scrapes. Could just be the way the, the rock crumbles or whatever. I don't know. So you just kind of scrapes, scrape, scrape. Looks a little scrapey. And just one more time, it's worth acknowledging the uh, that the the rendering. It's, it looks kind of abrupt there. Um, that it it kind of it doesn't always render things properly. Like sometimes you can see land masses under the digital water, so it's not showing you what's there um, not in a conspiratorial sense just in the sense of uh, it's impossible to perfectly render a, an infinitely detailed um, surface of a planet okay um, so I just wanted to point out that lip around the island you can check it out if you want uh, okay. Huh. Looks like it might be part of the road there. Kind of jagged here. See what I mean? Pretty jagged. Uh, angular, like a sawtooth. It could be modern work. I don't know. Well, let's look at the 360 view real quick. Oh, that's interesting. Um, hmm. Any signs of any signs? <laughs> I don't really know what I'm looking for. I'm just getting a feel for what it looks like. These 360 photos are very handy. Now I don't have to go there. It's kind of stalactite, stalagmite. Interesting texture, don't know what to say, other than cowabunga. What do we got here? Kind of a linear streak there, maybe. Everything's a tool mark to you, Brian. 
<clears throat> okay, A N J uh, G. Where was I? Okay, so yeah, same island. Just pointing out the scrapes here. Wrap up. I'll wrap this video up pretty soon. Could be natural. Could be whatever. Um, linear thing. Yeah. Then your thing there on uh, another one of those atoll islands. Um, angular there, obviously. Obviously, right there is very angular. But again, there's a road right here, so I don't know. Grooves. Got a patchy. Weird looking grooves here, kind of rectangular here. Rectangular. Again, I don't know. Regularly spaced trees. Among randomly spaced ones. Already touched on that. Angular mini bays. Okay. I don't know how much more of this I'm going to show you because I've already showed a lot of good. Good examples. Jagged underwater lines. Oh, you can kind of see uh, see these lines here. Cross. It's tough to get a good look at it. And it could even be a digital artifact or something. Um, where'd they go? See right there. Could be some kind of fishing uh, net or something, uh, some kind of weird looks to it. I think you see it all along here, or at least on the, yeah, like it's right here too. And you know what, that might just be like sand running down, so I should leave it. And we will end with uh, underwater heart shape at the end of a line. Another one. See a fairly straight line with a little boomerang at the end. And these lines here. Could be anything again. Piping, oil, oil pipes or water pipes or fishing. Uh, maybe it's like a ship dragging its anchor. Huh? Huh? Okay, I'm done. Uh, I'll be back next time with more stuff. I'll see you.